What happened inside the house stayed inside the house. We had a happy family that we presented to the outside world, but it was an ugly one when we were alone. The fights, the abuse, the sleepless nights, it was a torturous childhood. I would go to my closet and cry out to God. I didn't know him very well. I learned about him in a neighbor's backyard when I was in the first grade. I remember the day that I chose to follow him. How excited I was. I knew my life was different. I knew that God was with me and that Jesus loved me. I didn't know very much, but I knew that. Despite this newfound hope, the fighting never stopped, their drinking never stopped, and deep in my soul, I knew that there was a better way. I just didn't know how to find it. I made some poor choices as a teenager. I had learned well what my parents taught me, and the lure of alcohol and drugs was very strong. By 16, I found myself deep in the bar scene in Denver. I tried desperately to fill the ache in my soul for love, and at the point that I hit bottom, I awoke one morning, naked and alone in a house after having been raped by three men. I remember thinking that Jesus could never love me now. I had learned to live in secret, so this just became part of my dark, hidden world. My soul was crying out, but I didn't understand it, and I married the first man that would take me away from the circumstances, thinking that that was my answer. A year later, I had twin baby boys and a husband that was becoming just as abusive as my father, and I knew that there was a better way, so I left. By the time my boys entered school, I had remarried and we settled in Texas. I remember the day that my boys came home very excited because there was a lady that was going to start a good news club at their school. I had no idea what this club was, but they were excited to be the kids that were in the very first one, so I agreed and I gave them permission to attend. I found myself showing up earlier each week so that I could hear the whole story. The boys begged me to go to church to continue to hear the good news, and so we did. Two years later, the three of us were baptized together on an Easter Sunday. My life was changed. I found the love in my soul that I had been searching for, and I was truly changed from the inside out. One day, in the midst of my thoughts, I realized that my own experience of meeting Jesus was very much like the Good News Club that my children attended. I wondered if it could have been related, so I began to search. After several cold calls to churches in the area that I grew up in, I eventually found a pastor there that remembered the ladies that taught out of their home. He confirmed to me that it was indeed a Good News Club all those years ago where I met Jesus for the very first time. This amazing tool that the Lord used to transform my family was the same one that he used to save me. During all those dark years of my life, he had been faithful. He promised to never leave me and he did not. His Holy Spirit continually drew me back to himself and away from the life that I so easily could have chosen. Those two ladies who started a club in my neighborhood may never know the impact that those small acts of love made in the life of a young girl, a girl who came for a safe place, for snacks to fill her stomach, stories to fill her imagination, and for love to fill her heart when everything was broken at home. And now, the Good News Club in a small Texas community where my sons and daughter attended is the same Good News Club that my five grandchildren attend. To me, a Good News Club is more, far more, than just receiving good news. It changed our family, it brought hope, it brought life, and it brought Jesus. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then like and subscribe to our channel for more. Don't forget to check out our other videos.